Hello everyone, welcome to Love Talk. I'm James. I am Helena. And today we're going to be talking about dating part two. We are Can't here. Wait. Yes, we are <laughs> here with our panel back again. And we're going to continue talking about dating. What it means today. Well, last week we spoke about the, the light-hearted part of, of dating. Today we're going to talk about mm, how serious long, note, isn't yes, it? Yes. How long it should go on for, what dating really is all about. So without further ado, we are going to, to meet our panel here for those yes. who weren't here uh, last time. We have uh, Elijah, Pamela, Joseph. I remember everyone's name. <laughs> we actually have someone who had a question for us on Facebook, right? Yes. Um, it's Sam and he, he's asking if we believe um, in love at first sight. He wants to know what our opinion is on, on this. I think the best thing is to let our panel answer. Joseph, you have an opinion on that, right? Yeah, um, love at first sight. I don't think that I don't believe in that love at first sight. I believe that you can be attracted to the person at mm. first sight, but how can you love someone you don't know? How can you love someone you don't know what their character is? You don't know what you know who they are. You don't know anything about them. So the love at first sight it might be it might lead or that that initial attraction might lead to something greater, but. It's not that it's not love because love has to grow. It doesn't. It doesn't just happen like instantly. It's not magic. Yeah, you don't know if the person is a, a con artist, right? You don't know oh, if the person serial killer. Is serial killer, <laughs> in, in a more extreme case, right? Yeah. So I mean, you you can really like someone because you saw them. Uh, usually, people say there is lust at first sight, not love at mm -hmm. first sight. So. What's his name? Can Sam. Sam. Can I also invite our viewers to visit our uh, Facebook page, which is Love Talk Show. You know, just search, uh, go to the search eng engine and, and type um, Love Talk Show. And um, uh, weekly we have topics mm -hmm. where we ask questions and everything. Uh, I mean, you are free to take part and give us your opinion. Okay? So what we want to know today is this, or tonight rather. I mean, what is dating? We, we heard last time from you what dating is about. When could dating be going on for too long? I mean, what, what is the right, right amount of time to date? I don't know who wants to answer that one. Hello. Elijah, you, you're dating. How, how long should you date for? Could you date for too long? Um, not for too long, because eventually you get boring. After a while, you want to like, take it to another step, another mm -hmm. level. Mm -hmm. So. If it's, some people like to date until like one year, two years, mm -hmm. but two years maximum, I think, at least so two years maximum. You think two years is the right amount of time to get married, to, to date before you get married or, or go on to a, a further commitment? Yeah, because you, you would know who the person is already in mm -hmm. the two years. You would know who the person is and you know how the character is. So in those two years, you would think, okay, all right, let's take it to another level. Mm -hmm. Let me commit to this person. Let me ask this person if they want to, you know, take it to another level to yeah. get married and stuff. So but, then, but then the other problem is, and, and we were discussing this before the show started, the other problem is that uh, for a man, that is easier because the man is the guy who proposes, is the guy who says, let's get married. For a woman, she has to She's sort just of like... She's waiting. Yeah, she has to depend on the guy. She can really think, look, this is the guy for me. I mean, how is it for a woman, Joanne? How, how do you think? Is it harder for a woman to um, wait on the guy or...? I think so, because like we were discussing before the show, um, you didn't propose, you just sort of said, Look, let's be right for each other, let's get married. I mean, I'm the type of girl, if a guy was to go all cheesy and like propose, I wouldn't mind, I'm, I, I like that romance and stuff, but mm -hmm. if it was a thing where... <laughs> we all do, it's true, we all do, Joanne. It's true, but... If it was a thing where, okay, we'll make a mutual decision to get married, I wouldn't be so bothered neither because mm -hmm. if it's to a point that you're dating and then, you know, you know you're right for the person, why are you going to carry on dating yeah. for? But then the thing is, for example, Joanne, you, the guy proposes to you, but you, you know you like each other, you know you're right for each other. Are you really going to be that surprised? Like, oh my God, he proposed to me. I don't, I don't think it's the, it's the whole point of, you know he's going to propose, because if you're right for each other, you know it's going to happen at some point. But I think it's because you don't know when it's going to happen. That's what's the surprise. Mm. Joy, you look like you want to say something. Yeah, no, I, was, I was just going to say that I think it's important that whilst you're dating, you're communicating, because mm -hmm. it also gives you a, a strong indicator as, well, as to whether you're progressing in, in, ter mm. in terms of your feelings, mm. 
you know, your thoughts towards each other. And where you're um, going, isn't yes, it? Yes, absolutely. If, you, if there's no communication, then I think as women, we wouldn't be able to pick that up. So mm. I think it's important that even if the guy is or isn't there at that point, but it's important to keep that those communication lines open mm. yeah. um, so everyone kind of knows where they stand, mm -hmm. you know? But you know something? So, uh, Hollywood pro tries to portray this thing where they are, you know, the girl is dating the boy for mm -hmm. a long time and then it's like she's not paying attention, she's not communicating and vice versa. Then suddenly he pops a question. Mm -hmm. Listen, would you marry me? And she goes like, oh yes, of course. You know, she goes all mm -hmm. crazy and stuff. Mm -hmm. So in real life, if you are really communicating like you're saying, you know where you're heading, isn't it? Yeah. Otherwise you wouldn't be and, dating and, in the first and place. And I, I think, for example, since we're talking about dating, what what we want to explain to you is that it's not very normal if you really like someone, love someone even, and you want to be with the person, but there's no talk of taking the things further. That's not very normal, right? For example, with the reason why we said that I, I didn't really propose to my wife as such is because we both knew that's what we wanted. Yeah. We dated for a while, we, we got to know each other, we, we thought, no, we want this. So I didn't say to Elena, Elena, would you marry me? Because I knew she would. Right? I, I was dating you because I would. Yeah, exactly. You are so sure of yourself. Look at it. I knew she. But for example, James, we, we don't want to sound unfair. For example, maybe the person at home uh, is dating someone for five years, yeah. even, and uh, they've talked about marriage, but there, there is a financial thing mm -hmm. where they can't afford the, the, you know, the reception and everything else that they dream of having. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's why, but we're talking about those who don't even talk about marriage and it's just like dating for seven years, eight years, mm -hmm. and they say they love each other mutually. So mm -hmm. it doesn't really make much sense. Yeah, and, and we know that in 2013, there are people who, th who think that marriage is not that important, but it's important that there is a commitment. However, you see mm -hmm. that commitment, it's, it's up to you entirely, but there has to be some sort of commitment in the relationship. Yeah, so do the, you, the do you agree, Michelle? Yeah, definitely, I agree. Um, that you have, to, you have to be committed to each other. You have to know what the other person wants. It is really important to communicate. Going back to what you said about proposing, that's actually how me and my boyfriend started dating because it wasn't like he asked me out. We were actually talking for a long time before we started dating and we actually came to the mutual decision that, yeah, we actually want to take it a step further than just talking. How did it happen? Did you say, oh, what if we date? <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> the thing is, he's very organized. So he had everything planned out in a way because he, know what, he knows what he wants. And at the same time, I know what I want to. Mm -hmm. So um, we were talking for a long time and we came to the, it really was quite a mutual decision. It wasn't like, oh, you know, oh, I like you. Do you like me too? It was, it was mm -hmm. really mutual. So it made it easy for us at the same so time. You, you reached that stage yeah. where you knew this is the next step. Yeah. Right, exactly. And, and, and dating, that's how dating should be, right? It should be a, a succession of steps. You, you get to know the, there's a first date. Uh, even Joseph was saying last, uh, last time that mm. it's, it's a bit of a nerve wracking experience, but then eventually you, you ease and, and, and you, you get to know the person better. So you actually enjoy really being with that person. And it goes on through different stages. Yeah, and I think it's important, as I said before, that both are patient. They are, you know, they are not so, uh, expecting so much perfection because no one is perfect so it's unfair for example I'm looking for Mr. Right so you are dating with someone a man and he's not you know perfect so mm -hmm. he might be still Mr. you know right mm -hmm. but he will never be Mr. Perfect yeah, so you have to be perfection yeah it's not gonna happen in fact I mean w when I was dating Elena I saw imperfections in her she saw imperfections in me and even today those imperfections don't go away you sort of get better as you go along but the imperfections are there. So the, the dating period is not for you to find someone mm. who's perfect or try to make the person perfect. Mm. If you're trying to make the person perfect so that you can commit, that will never happen. If you say, look, I'm just waiting for you to be a little bit more like I want so that then I can introduce you to my parents. Mm. That's not gonna happen, right? But by the way, there's a, a very sensitive subject, actually two sensitive subjects when we talk about dating. One is money. Right? Mm -hmm. When do you let the person into your bank account? When do you give the PIN number to your card? <laughs> <laughs> Never until you are married. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll, we'll explain. It's not really I know what we'll you explain. mean. Do you explain. The other subject is the subject of sex. Mm. 
mm. of sleeping together with the person because usually people say, well, I can't get married with you unless I know that we are okay in bed. And we touched on this in the last program, but let's go on the money thing first. Maybe Pamela, you can answer that one, right? Mm -hmm. You were the one that had a, a boyfriend that at 40 years old, he lived with his parents, yeah. right? <laughs> Tell How us something, when, <laughs> when, when is it okay in a date for you to know everything there is to know about the other person's account, the other person's expenditures? When is it okay? Is it ever okay? Um, during the dating, you do need to know about their financial circumstances, mm -hmm. you know, um, but not to the extent that you know his PIN number. Mm -hmm. For example, you know, you might know that he's got savings or things like this, or he's got... Not on the first date, right? Not on the first date, but this like... Like he's working... Yeah, he's working, he's got a good job, his salary and mm. things like this, you know, but there, there is a limit until you actually do marry, and then mm. you can finally know what's in his bank account and what's in yours. Let's say, so let's say that you, you guys have come to the conclusion that you want to be together, you say, look, Let's get engaged and in six months we'll tie the knot. Mm -hmm. What is out of bounds, what is not out of bounds in terms of money? Um, if you're engaged, then I think then obviously you're going to know everything about each other's financial life because you will marry. Mm -hmm. But if you're dating, then obviously there has to be a boundary. Oh, mm -hmm. But when you're engaged, you are still dating, right? <laughs> yeah, He's asking a tricky that, one. <laughs> you've got that commitment that you are going to marry. When you're just dating, you don't know if this man is going to truly be Mm. Mm -hmm. the one for you for that you're going to spend the rest of your life with w what about pin numbers uh, <laughs> joy i don't know if you can see on the camera but joy is doing it like this <laughs> pass on the mic pass on the mic let's see what she has to do <laughs> you don't, i mean I, I wouldn't ask and i wouldn't expect to be mm -hmm. asked mm -hmm. it's just, it's but that, I, that's I quite think, deep i think if you're like if you're engaged you're about to get married if it's something that comes natural i think when we were engaged i think did you know my pin number um, I still do until today because you don't. Yeah, I so think I <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't I think, know anything. I think uh, I forgot. I forgot about my pin number. He and, doesn't even and carry a wallet. She remembers, but I think it has to be something that's natural. You're not going to say, "Look, we're engaged. What's your pin number?" I don't. Because <laughs> we were planning. We were planning our wedding. So at that point, we need to know where we stand, and also we were saving when we, we were going out. So yeah. it's like, how much are we spending today? Yeah. But that's, that's a mutual so, thing. It's yeah. not like, for example, and by the way, if the guy says, look, I want, I want you to prove how much you love me, what's your pin number, but you can't have mine, then <laughs> something Run away. Is, something's wrong. Yes. But uh, of course, what we're trying to say here is that you get to a stage where there, there are very little things that are out of bounds. So when we come back after the break, we're going to talk about two things, your phone and uh, sex. Is it, when do you do that? When do you sleep together? When, and, and do you have access to the person's phone all the time? Is it your privacy? We're gonna find out after the break. Welcome back. So now we're gonna delve into the question that everyone was thinking about but no one wanted to talk about. And that is, when you date, when is it okay to, to sleep with a person, to have a, an actual sexual relationship with a person? Is it ever okay? And, and I think, Joseph, you have a, a view on that, right? What, what, what's your view on this? I, I personally think that um, sex should be um, something that is, ta uh, that step should be taken once you've actually committed to the person you're, you're, or you're mm -hmm. married. Because um, I've, I've found from experience that a lot of um, people they are just in relationships which they've got into because of sex because they've is, taken is that something that happened to you um in yeah so I've, I've been in relationships where yeah, it was it was basically a, a sexual relationship and that was all we had in common really mm -hmm. you know and you you can be in a relationship for a long time just having that in common mm -hmm. and then when it when you realize or the, that sparkle goes or whatever it is that that breaks that momentum then you know, you've, you ended up with, you end up with nothing, and both people become hurt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it, it's not an, it's not a nice feeling. I mean, sometimes you feel used, and 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 I'm sure the other person feels used as well. And and the thing is, what we want you to understand is that we're not saying whether it's right or wrong, whether you should do it or not. That's up to to you. That's up to your to your values. That's up to your conscience. What we are trying to say to you is that dating is not about that. Mm -hmm. Dating, as we said here today, and we said uh, in other in the last program is, 
is to find out who the person is. Dig deep and see what the person's about because that's what's going to make the relationship last. You, you were saying something as well about that, Pamela. Um, yeah, I mean, I slept with people and really regretted it and mm -hmm. I knew that they were just using me just to say, okay, now I've had her, I've slept with her. Mm -hmm. So it made me feel so unvalued mm -hmm. and I wouldn't want to do it again. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's not, for example, Elaine, it's not that that is, is something that's wrong. The, the intimate relationship between two people is something that is, it was actually created for a reason, to bring mm -hmm. them closer together, but there is a, there's a you time need to for wait. that. You need to wait for the right time, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think. When you, when you uh, go straight to that, it, you are skipping a very important stage mm -hmm. of your, your relationship called, you know, dating, as we've been speaking about, and getting to know the person. Yeah. I mean, this is so, so important because what happens is, we see this a lot, uh, the couple, they are already very active sexually, but they are so distracted, they are not really getting to know each other. And then they go, um, they take a step, they get married, and mm. then they come to us, well, in our experience, mm. and uh, seeking advice and counseling because they don't want to be together anymore. This person is not what I thought she was, yeah. and many problems, and there's kids involved and so, so much because going on. Because what happens is that they put the carts in front of the horses, mm -hmm. right? That's what they did. Because usually you get to know the person, you, you get close to them, you find out everything about the person, then when you commit, you know, mm. this is it. And when you, are, when you uh, uh, give yourself to that person, to that, uh, at that level, you sleep with the person, you, you get involved emotionally mm. in a different level as well. So mm. when you see something that y y you don't like, it, it, it's like, oh, you know what, it's okay, I can cope with that. Even if, if we get married, mm -hmm. it's not that bad. But then, you, when you get married, you realize, I can't cope with this. Maybe mm -hmm. he's violent, maybe he is, uh, I don't know. Yeah. He treats you really bad. So, yeah. so, so that part should be like the, the cherry on the cake, mm -hmm. right? Should be, it's a very important part of the relationship, but like the cherry on the cake. After you, you, you've known everything there is to know about that person. Now, the other thing about dating, and probably this is one that's going to divide, I don't know if this is going to divide our, uh, our panel here, like the pin number on the card did, but <laughs> um, is, is your phone, right? Your phone, you have a lot of personal information there. You have texts, you have emails, you have uh, voicemails, many things, Contact. pictures, right? And at what stage is your, is your phone completely available for your boyfriend or girlfriend to, to look at in the relationship. Julian, when is it okay for the person to, to see, to know the pin, the pin for your phone and all that kind of stuff? Um, I would say after a while, because at, at the beginning, <laughs> <laughs> maybe, about, maybe about a year or so. The only reason why I would say that is because if at the beginning you have the person there nagging, oh, can I see your phone, can I see your phone, can you see your phone? Mm -hmm. You get kind of agitated. And you're probably thinking, why does she want, really want to see my phone? Don't she trust me? Because when mm -hmm. someone normally does that, it might be a sense that they don't trust sometimes. So the, Not always the case. But then the woman thinks, oh, what is he hiding? Do you understand? Yeah. It's, yeah. it's like a game thing. Yeah, it's, yeah. what is he hiding? But I'll say after, after a while, for me personally, on my phone, there's, I don't mind because my phone there's nothing there. But or, or, or Julian, you have to see that what you just said is a two-edged sword because yeah. you said, uh, but then if the person's always asking to see my phone is because she doesn't trust me. But then maybe she's always asking to see your phone because you've given her a reason not to trust you. Maybe that's mm -hmm. not your case, but... Mm. So you said after a year. But when you said, oh, maybe after a year, Joy already... So tell me, Joy, what, <laughs> what do you want to say? <laughs> because, well, for me, I, w I wouldn't be bothered. From the moment we're actually we're seriously dating, I actually wouldn't be bothered. They could see my phone. What do I have to hide? And in fact, with trust, I think trust is earned in so many ways. So mm -hmm. maybe the first couple of times they'll see there's actually nothing for me to hide. And it's, it's just, I mean, mm -hmm. you're, you're building on something. You're adding, mm -hmm. you know, you're adding in terms of, you're adding to what the, the, the value of, if you like, of yourself and, and what, how the person should see you. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, gi giving them reason to doubt. Mm -hmm. If you're saying you've got nothing on your phone, then you shouldn't have a problem with people. Chances are, you're, the girl that you're dating might not even want to look at your phone, but it's the idea mm -hmm. yeah. that, that you don't want to. Sh so and, it, and it's, also, it's you know, nobody, nobody goes into your phone to say, let me see what's in there. Sometimes it's just a matter of interest or the person has nothing to do. But then again, when you say, don't look at my phone, then the person really wants to look. And gets right? curious. So when, when would you say it's okay for 
for your, your phone to be completely available for the person? I think for me, I, I do think that maybe there's an... You, I feel that there's a bit of an age difference here when it comes to dating and what your expectations mm. are and the limits. But mm. based, I mean, on much of what we've discussed, I do find that there's not not a divide, but as you're older, there's certain things that you would just cut through. Mm -hmm. um, so what you consider to be an issue at my age, being old enough to be an older sister, um, <laughs> I, I, I would I, I would say that well, you know, it's okay just for them to see my phone at any point. So as mm -hmm. I'm saying, I think some of these things it's just based on an age, your experiences, yeah. and um, so therefore you just cut through a lot of that. And yeah. um, so so now probably the last thing we we want to talk about in these terms of dating is this. You know, if dating is the period of time before you commit. If there is something, anything, that makes you doubt the person's character, if you, for some reason, you don't trust the person, for example, the person does not want you to see their phone while you are in a committed relationship, the person hides certain things from you, then we wouldn't advise you to commit because if at any point there is a doubt that the person might be mm. uh, hiding something from you, then this is something I want you to commit. It will be very difficult for you to undo. It's better for you to find out everything there is to know about the person and only then commit. Would, mm -hmm. you, would you agree with that? Yeah, that's what we did, isn't it? Uh -huh. And uh, we had disagreements. We had a lot of disagreements. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that allowed us to get to know each other mm -hmm. really well and see what you stand for, what I stand for, what we want. And uh, it worked. Mm -hmm. I mean, there were so no secrets. Yeah, we, we, when, you're, when you're dating, I don't know, maybe Michelle can answer this question, because you, you are dating, right? Mm -hmm. um, you, you've been dating for how long? Um, just under three months. Three months. And how, how important is it for you that the person has nothing to hide? Um, very important, because I know that, say for example, you're on the first date or something, and you don't give all of yourself a, away, but at the same time, the person has to you have to be transparent in a way so you may not necessarily tell them everything but they have to see because you should be able to read body language i mean that um alone counts more than what you actually see mm -hmm. so it's important for you to to be able to um you know see how the person is without them necessarily saying anything or not what they're not saying but through their body language as well how they treat you how they act towards you how they are in certain situations just how they are mm -hmm. on a general basis like day to day yeah yeah so it's important that while you're dating for example if you see the person doesn't want you to meet their parents that's something concerning because you are going to be part of his family mm -hmm. if you see the person does not really want you to know where they work um, where they live not that you have to go to the house all the time, but you know there has to be, like Michelle said, a transparency. And if that transparency is not there, that is what the moment of dating is for, for you to make a decision. And when you're dating, right, Elena, you, mm -hmm. you don't always make a decision that it will work. Sometimes it doesn't work. But it's, it's better for you to know that it didn't work while you were dating mm -hmm. than for you to get married, to move in, buy a house, have children, and then you realize it didn't work. Mm -hmm. That the person was actually not right for you. Mm -hmm. So it, it's the time to, to see, the, the, the time to see actually is now dating. Yeah. So There's no better time than this. That's right. I have a message for you that you are watching us now and perhaps you are dating someone, you're engaged to someone. Let me tell you, ideally in our mind, we would like to say that every person who dates, every person who's engaged will eventually be married and be happily ever after. Unfortunately, in real life, it doesn't always work like that. But let me tell you something. If you are in a relationship and you have doubts that this can work or the person is giving you reason for, for you not to trust them 100%, mm -hmm. it is better for you to, 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 you know, to cry now because you're going to have to make a difficult decision. But then you have the rest of your life to get it right. Then you go ahead with something you're unsure of and and then you suffer for quite some time. Mm. Think of it like this. If, you, if you're gonna jump out of an airplane um, for skydiving, but the person who's gonna jump with you says, listen, I think that this parachute will open. <laughs> <laughs> right? Don't jump. You wouldn't jump. You say, what do you mean you think? No, no, I'm pretty sure, I'm 99%. If there's 99% chance it will open, you don't jump, right? 
And that's what dating <laughs> is about. If you are 100% sure that it's going to work, then don't worry about um, proposing this, that, because what's important is that both of you know that you're going to be happy together. Okay? That's right. It's been a pleasure to be here with us, with you rather, and I want to thank all the panel for thank being here. Thank you for with coming. Us. No so, Julian, hopefully it won't get to a year before your phone will be available. <laughs> 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 but I'm sure that you at home probably you've, you've uh, benefited from what was said here. Until next time, have a wonderful day.